Mark Covey, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Motion Reality Incorporated out of Marietta, Georgia. And we're here uh, partnering with Intel and, and HP, showing our dauntless law enforcement and military virtual reality set. Dauntless is a, is a labor of love that's taken about 33 years. We started as a traditional motion capture company in 1984. But it's been the goal of our boss, the CEO and chairman, Dr. Tom McLaughlin, to make it into a, a multi-person, tetherless, virtual reality simulation. So in 33 years, we've, we've come from doing mocap for the Polar Express uh, to doing full-out, you know, multi-person, tetherless VR. So what you're seeing in the background here is a, is a law enforcement training, which we'll, we'll put uh, young police officers going through the academy through so they can understand, you know, what they're looking for, what signs to, to look for in a hostile environment, how to, how to de-escalate a certain situation, and how in harm's way to act in, in, in you know, their safety and the safety of the public. It can also be used in a, in a military force where you can put 12 people in a volume at one time so they can learn small team tactics in, in a squad level tactical environment, either internal and external. The cool thing about the volume is that behind me is only 1,200 square feet but it can replicate a, a neighborhood of a, of a Turkish alley, for example. Um, so no matter how small your real space is, your virtual space can be as large as you can, as you can dream it. Um, in our typical product, which is about the size of a basketball court, we've actually put a 64,000 square foot, multi-layered, multi-leveled high school for law enforcement to practice uh, active shooter scenarios. Um, we got in into the booth uh, through a partnership with Intel and, and Hewlett Packard uh, through a serendipitous meeting in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, bumped into to, uh, some HP personnel. We started talking about VR, and in the past six months, uh, grew up to have a very good relationship with Hewlett Packard and Intel. And um, so, what you see are, are guys using the HP servers with Intel components and, and HP backpacks. Uh, with Intel components, all integrated, both software and hardware, with our components to make it a full-out uh, training environment. Sure, it's. Um, I mean, it goes back to our legacy uh, of being a motion capture company. We've uh, our, our technology has been used in many of the major performance capture movies that, that you know of, and so we took our traditional mocap uh, technology. You see 40 mocap cameras on the volume behind us. They're actually optically tracking all the 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 marker balls on the individuals behind us. Uh, and each one of those marker balls are assigned to a trainee, so the computer systems knows which marker balls were the which individual, which allows us to get the multi-people in there at the same time, yet keep them as separate entities. Um, that is being tracked in, in one of the uh, HP servers for tracking software. It's then going into a game uh, server, a second of our servers. Uh, the game currently is Cry. Uh, we're adapting to Unity 3D and we've used other game engines as well. That's doing the image generation. But between the game and the tracking, it's integrated or, or, or uh, adjudicated in a third server, which is the Battle Master Controller, which then sends the game state wirelessly to the, to the HP backpack, which renders the image and pipes it into our head-mounted display, currently using so Sensix OS VR. Well, the future of VR is not locked into law enforcement or military. I mean, it, it can go into, you know, as my boss is saying, we're, we're, we are limited, but we're limited by only those things, uh, you know, that can move. If it can move, we can actually train it, we can play in it, we can replicate it, we can, we can have fun with it. So the, the interest in VR is figuring out what's the next step. You know, perhaps it's an haptic device to, to, so that you can feel the environment, not just see it and, and interact in it. Perhaps a, an, an aural or, 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 or even smell, bringing it in more and more realistic. The great thing about VR is it's cost cutting at the same time as it, with regards to training anyway, it's cost cutting as well as realistic. Um, you know, I spent 27 years with the United States Army, and I'll tell you my experience is soldiers don't like to get shot. And yet you want them to understand the negative ramifications of doing something poorly. This VR system behind me provides those negative ramifications. If they get shot, there are TENS devices on their body which will give them a shock to let them know they've done something wrong. Now you, 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 you couple that with the after action review capability that's inherent in the system, as soon as they step out of the volume, they can go to a training station 
and rewatch the entire scenario they just walked through. Not just from their viewpoint, but also from the adversary's viewpoint, or from what we call a god view or an overhead view of the entire battlefield. Which in that, in that type of instant feedback immediately after is invaluable in training. And I'm talking about training in the law enforcement and military. This could obviously translate to sports, it could translate to medical training, it could translate to anything that you want to capture the motions of an individual and tap it into an image generation to see what's going on.